How's everyone doing? Today I'll be showing you my Olive Films Blu-ray collection. Now I don't have every release from them, but they do a lot of great releases, so I have picked up a few of them. And I figured I'd go ahead and show you. And I'm going to reorganize my whole collection. Uh, so I figured right now I just have them all stacked together. Uh, and that just happened to be right there. And I figured I'd just do a video for it. And then, you know, I'm going to disassemble them and put them in alphabetical order. And uh, my horror movies are going to be over there. So I have, I think, a couple horror movies from all of films. So I'll put them over there. But let's go ahead and check out my Olive Films Blu-ray collection. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them as well. And let me know if there's any Olive Films Blu-rays that you think I should check out as well. Let's check it out. Check it a check. First up is Ticks right here, which I love the heck out of this movie. I never thought in a million years this would get a Blu-ray release, which is one reason that I really like Olive. They put out a lot of uh, releases that would normally not get a Blu-ray release. And this is just a great, low-budget, cheesy, awesome horror movie, giant ticks. You've got Clint Howard in here, Seth Green, uh, Alfonso Ribeiro, and the, the ending scene with Alfonso Ribeiro was excellent. Love this movie. I used to have the old bootleg of this for years, and I finally had to upgrade it. I'm so thankful they put that out. Next up is uh, Wild Orchid with uh, Mickey Rourke and uh, Jacqueline Bissett. Very sensual. Next up is Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. Some good Asian cinema. Next up is Blood Red right here with uh, Eric Roberts, Dennis Hopper, Burt Young. And uh, Giancarlo Giannini. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Next up is Caveman with uh, Ringo Starr, Dennis Quaid, Barbara Bach, uh, Shelley Long, uh, John Matuzic, who was, uh, of course, uh, Sloth in the Goonies. He was in a few other things as well, former NFL player. And he was the, the main kind of villainous character in here. Uh, there's a scene in here, though, where there's like a... I don't know, kind of like an abominable snowman, Bigfoot type creature, which was awesome. I wish they would have had that more in the movie because it was actually pretty creepy. Uh, this is a movie that's, I'm just keeping it in there because it's kind of campy and it's a great cast, but it's a caveman movie and they don't actually speak. They make like noises and they're like, ooga, ooga, you know, different things like that. And they're, I don't know, it's pretty campy. Uh, it's camp appeal for me, you know. Next up is 1969, Robert Downey Jr., Keith R. Sutherland, Bruce Dern, uh, a few other recognizable people in here. The mother, the actress who played the mother in here, had a fantastic job from her acting performance. A lot of social commentary about war in here. Next up is uh, The Facts of Life with Bob Hope and Lucille Ball. Can't go wrong with that combination. Next up is Vincent and Theo, uh, Vincent Van Gogh and his brother. And this stars uh, Tim Roth, who is a fantastic actor, and Paul Riss. And this is a Robert Altman film. Next up is Alan Quartermain in The Lost City of Gold with Richard Chamberlain and Sharon Stone. I love that artwork. So 80s. I love, uh, there's a lot of kind of like uh, Indiana Jones uh, themed movies that are kind of capitalizing off of that kind of adventure ones. Uh, there's a couple in here from all of the actually. Next up is Alice's Restaurant with uh, Arlo Guthrie. It's basically the, the song. There's a whole movie made about it. I do think it was a, a tad longer than it should have been personally. Next up is John Ford Dreaming the Quiet Man. It's a documentary on making the quiet man narrated by Gabriel Byrne. I thought this was a pretty good documentary, although it kind of, uh, it reminds me of a lot of different uh, films out there that have special features where this whole documentary would be on there. But if you're a big fan of The Quiet Man, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Some uh, interviews with uh, Maureen O'Hara, who of course was in the movie, and then Martin Scorsese, Pierre Bogdanov uh, Bogdanovich, a few other recognizable people. But uh, the main part is uh, Maureen O'Hara in here. She has, uh, and she had, in the special features, there's some interviews with her, and that kind of just should have been included in the full documentary because it looks like it was from the same interview. And there's some people where they actually they show the town where it was shot in Ireland, and uh, there's people that are still capitalizing off of that, like a gift store. And they have a, a there's a young girl who uh, took a picture with uh, John Wayne, and when uh, she was on set, or when he was on set, rather, 
and uh, she's all grown up now. She has the picture. So it's, so it's lots of history there. And there's a, a couple quick interview clips of John Ford, uh, which he wasn't, uh, you know, somebody that you would want to be interviewing because he, you know, he was kind of difficult. But it was still interesting to see that. And uh, kind of talked about all the issues he had with financing it and getting it produced. And I thought it was kind of funny. They were like, all right, uh, you have to cut this film down. And what he did was, uh, when they were showing it, he decided to cut the ending off. And so they were like, oh, we have to see the ending. And so they went through and, you know, he got approved for that. So he ended up getting the full film that way, which I thought was kind of funny. You know, when they tell you to make cuts and edits, they don't mean cut off the ending, but... It's pretty entertaining. I love this cover. Holy moly. This cover just drew me in. Uh, Roy Scheider and Night Game right here. Uh, about a serial killer. And I like uh, the 80s feet. Well, it's an 80s movie. But it just definitely, you see it and it's just like automatically you're transported to the 80s. And the Astrodome as well uh, has to do some of the serial killings. Uh, happens, coincides with uh, Night Games uh, when the Astros are playing at home. Next up is uh, Teachers with Nick Nolte and Joe Beth Williams and Judd Hirsch. A lot of great uh, teaching movies. I think this is definitely one of the better ones out there in my opinion. Hollywood Shuffle with Robert Townsend. Always remember him from uh, Meteor Man. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I think he's actually really entertaining. And this was a, a pretty good movie uh, about how, it's, how it is to be a uh, black actor in Hollywood. And there's a lot of great parodies in here. I love the parody of uh, Eben Roper as well. I thought that was great. Some of the parodies go a little bit over the top, but still very entertaining. Next up is Harry and Son with uh, Paul Newman. Lord of the Flies with uh, Balthasar Getty. I remember watching this. I can't remember if I was in middle school or high school, but we read the book and then afterwards uh, we were shown this in class. And looking back on it, I don't think they would ever do that now because... Uh, it is a darker film. There's a scene with uh, The Rock and the kid getting killed. and Well, I mean, you know, you know there's... What goes on in this, uh, if you read the book, I'm pretty sure it's required reading. At least it was back when I was growing up. But there's some, uh, you know, violent imagery in there. And, uh, you know, when you're reading it, it's one thing. But when you actually visually see it, it's another thing. But I did enjoy that adaptation. Uh, some classic Abbott and Costello right here. Dance With Me, Henry. Cooley High. This is one that I'm so thankful they put out. This is such an underrated film, fantastic film, and I'm really shocked that this didn't get a blue release sooner. It definitely deserved to, and I'm, I'm glad it finally uh, got one from Olive Films. Next up is Firewalker, another kind of like Indiana Jones uh, capitalization right there with Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett. Love that cover art again. Sorry for the glare right there. Next up is Biodome. To me, this is always Pauly Shore's best. He he has done some entertaining things. Son-in-law was good. I think there's in the army. And then there's another one where he was in like a like a it was a courtroom kind of dramedy, if you will. And that was pretty decent. But this to me was always my favorite. And Encino Man was probably his most popular. But this was my favorite uh, with uh, William Atherton, Stephen Baldwin, and uh, where is the uh, Joey Lauren Adams and Kylie Minogue? Just a lot of fun. And I always think of this as like a stoner comedy. But this is definitely nostalgia for me. I watched this all the time growing up as a kid. So happy to have that on Blu-ray. Next up is Behind Enemy Lines, the original. Uh, of course, there's the remake probably like a decade ago with Owen Wilson and Gene Hackman. This is what it was based on. Next up, Without a Clue with Michael Caine and Bing Kingsley. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and Watson right there. Blue Sky with Jessica Lange and Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones looks so much younger now. I mean, back then, or I mean, not now, but in this. And compared to now, he just seems like, every time I see Tommy Lee Jones or think of him now, I just think of him, he just looks so unhappy and like grumpy and like, he's like the old grumpy cat. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, The Beat Generation, which uh, this has a uh, Satchmo in here, Louis Armstrong. The Quiet Gun with uh, Lee Van Cleef. The End of Violence with a great cast in this one. Bill Pullman, Andy McDowell, and Gabriel Byrne. Next up is uh, Dangerously Close. Love this one growing up. Uh, kind of, uh, that's Tom uh, Matthews in here as well. 
from Return of the Living Dead 1 and 2 and Jason Lives. And uh, John Stockwell was great in here. There's a few other people in here. Uh, J.D. Peck, I don't know whatever happened to him, but he was really good in here as well. Uh, basically, it's people like a, a, a gang essentially uh, killing other students and... Um, it's, they have like, it's kind of like a manhunt game in here as well. I can't remember what they called it. Something hunt down, I think it was. Uh, but I like the ending to this as well. Great social commentary in here. Chattahoochee with Gary Oldman and Dennis Hopper. Uh, basically, uh, some social commentary here as well with, uh, you know, abuse and mental patients and things like that. Next up is How to Beat the High Cost of Living. Susan St. James, Jane Curtin, Jessica Lang. Uh, a few other recognizable faces in here. Next up is Extremities with Farrah Fawcett. Really a darker, dramatic role. Next up is Satan's Blade. Uh, the, the best thing about this was the score. Very talented composer in here. It's a low-budget 80s slasher. Uh, I do like the snowy setting. Uh, the pacing wasn't great. There's some dramatic pacing here that kind of took you out of it. Uh, a lot of romance aspects. It's a... Blood and Boobs B-movie, if you will. Uh, the blood is, you know, it looks like red paint. But I love the heck out of that cover. And there's, even though it's not the greatest film, I still do enjoy it. There's something about it that just kind of drew me in. Again, maybe it's the snowy setting and the fantastic score. Uh, there were some, definitely some creepy things going on. I like the concept, but they didn't play it up quite enough. And again, the pacing was not very good. And it's just kind of a, it's a basic low-budget 80s slasher. Nothing really stands out particularly about it, but... Uh, it's nice that it got a release right here. This is the 30th anniversary edition. Uh, the interview in here with the director was kind of awkward. The interviewer didn't do a great job, in my opinion. and uh, But it was still cool to hear him talk about everything that he went through and all that. Next up is uh, Flawless with Robert De Niro and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman in drag. Uh, <laughs> may he rest in peace. I think he was a very talented actor. And De Niro, definitely one of my all-time favorites. Next up is Peter Benchley's Creature with Craig T. Nelson and Kim Cattrall. I love that cover. Stan Winston did the creature effects and way better than the old DVD MGM release cover where it was just Kim Cattrall and Craig T. Nelson standing on the cover. Um, really like this one a lot. It's basically a military doing testing and they create a shark human hybrid. You can see it right there. And they do show the creature a good amount towards the end of the movie. And I believe it was a TV miniseries, like a two-parter maybe, from what I can recall. Last but certainly not least is It, The Terror from Beyond Space from 1958. I remember watching this as a kid, and this takes me back to my childhood right here. I loved old, you know, 50 sci-fi especially. You know, nowadays it's all CGI, but I still love the days of, you know, creature features with men in rubber suits. You know, Creature from the Black Lagoon, It. Terror from Beyond Space. So really happy to get this one on Blu-ray again. I love that they're releasing a lot of these films that normally would not get Blu-ray releases. Uh, I just think that's excellent. Uh, the transfers, it's way better. Like a lot of these ones I uh, had on DVD or either I had bootlegs of and the, the transfers were terrible. So the transfers on these Blu-rays are such a huge improvement. All right, I just found four more Olive Films Blu-rays, including the Bogans. And I say the Bogans instead of the Boogans because uh, the old man in the, towards the end of the movie actually says the Bogans. So this is a fun creature feature. I always enjoy this one. I used to have an old bootleg of this for years. So happy to finally have the Blu-ray release. And it's the only Olive Films Blu-ray that I have in my collection anyways that has a slip cover. So that's pretty cool. And love the heck out of that one. Uh, next up is Ski School. Lots of nostalgia with this one. I remember watching this all the time as a kid. Has uh, Dean Cameron in here. And he'll always be Chainsaw to me. And I would love to see Olive Films release Summer School, one of my all-time favorite movies. And Summer School has a great cast as well. Of course, you've got Mark Harmon, Kurt Alley leading the film. But you also have, again, Dean Cameron and this guy right here, uh, Patrick Leberto. I believe his name is. They're both in Ski School and Summer School together. They just basically like to play movies with school in the title. And you also have Courtney Thorne Smith and Shawnee Smith, who is now most notably known for being in the Saw movies. But she was in a bunch of movies back in the day, including the Blob remake. But I would absolutely love to see Olive Films release Summer School on Blu-ray as well. 
Great cast, great comedy movie. Uh, one of my all-time favorites. Please, 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 Olive Films, release Summer School on Blu-ray as well if you can. Do it. This one right here is just a classic ski comedy movie. And it kind of reminds me of a few other different films. Like Out in the Cold was a more uh, recent one, even though that was like 10 years ago now. But I think that definitely was inspired by Ski School. And it's just a lot of fun. There's lots of hot chicks in here and hijinks and partying. And there's some cool uh, ski shots spliced in there as well. Next up is Eric the Viking. This is a great cast in here. It's basically a Viking comedy. If you like Monty Python, you'll probably enjoy this as Tim Robbins, uh, Mickey Rooney, John Cleese. And... Next up is Yellowbeard, which is basically a pirate comedy movie. It uh, has David Bowie's in here, uh, Cheech and Chong, Eric Idle, Peter Boyle. Just a, a great cast in here as well. Very entertaining. And again, another if you like Monty Python, I think you'll appreciate the humor in here as well. Also because uh, John Cleese is in uh, both uh, Yellowbeard and Eric the Viking. And I just found one more Olive Films released right here, Fugly with John Leguizamo. A very introspective rom-com, even though its tagline is an anti-romantic comedy. It's definitely a rom-com, and uh, obviously it mirrors his own life in some aspects of uh, his acting career. And I was able to actually get this signed up, although you can barely see the signature. You can see it right there on the front. I saw his stand-up at my local comedy club, and uh, before I can give him my Sharpie, he was already in sign mode, signing a bunch of stuff there. He was selling books and DVDs, and I... Uh, had him sign it and he just signed it in this dried up sharpie that he was using but thankfully i will show you this real quick too i was able to get this signed up and i definitely uh, shoved my sharpie uh, in his direction for him to sign there and this one turned out great the land of the dead steelbook right there very nice signature and even though this one, you know, is you can barely see the signature, it was still a good experience. And I did enjoy the movie as well. I didn't think I was going to because I'm not a big rom-com fan. Uh, but it was a lot better than I was expecting. And some really good performances in here. I really liked Rosie Perez in here a lot as well. And John Leguizamo too. This is probably one of uh, uh, my favorite acting roles from him in a while, actually. So, very good release. And I would definitely recommend this one out if you like uh, romantic comedies. And his stand-up was hilarious as well. So I was really glad to see that performance. It was a good experience all the way around. And he was really friendly. Even if you didn't buy stuff from him, he would still sign and take pictures. And all of the Olive Films releases have little numberings right down there on the spines. So if you have the whole collection, you can put them in order. Kind of like what Criterion Collection does. And a few other companies do this as well. You can see that right there. And then... Uh, the recent one of uh, Satan's Blade right here has a different little symbol. It says Martini Entertainment on there, but it has a little olive on there for Olive Films. And Martini Entertainment is a division of Olive Films where they acquire, distribute, and produce independent films like Satan's Blade. So look forward to more releases from this division as well, which it'll showcase that on the spine for Martini Entertainment. I think it looks kind of neat, actually, but I do kind of wish it had the same one as all the other ones because all the other ones are lined up, but I am going to reorganize the collection, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to have all the Olive films together like this, but they all do look pretty cool with that little symbol right there, and then that one kind of stands out, but I do like that. So there you go. There is my Olive Films Blu-ray collection. Let me know if you've seen any of the movies and what you think of them as well, and if you have any recommendations for Olive Films Blu-rays for me to pick up. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.